I have the unfortunate duty of going first. Uh, my name is Craig. I am a romantic and asexual. Um, I consider myself rather lucky because I kind of had my hands in all of the different pies. Um, not cake. <laughs> um, what? No, that's terrible. Okay. Uh, so I first found asexuality in 2009. Um, I didn't actually identify as asexual at first. It took me a year until 2010, September. Um, and then, you know, from there the train sort of started rolling really fast because three months, as soon as I was able to, I uh, joined the moderator team, um, the Avalon team with Avin. Uh, I was with them for a period of eight months. I ended um, August 2010. Um, so that was... Then uh, February 2010, I actually created the Deaf Race, a vlogging group on YouTube. It was a group of around seven people, though we've had about 10 people involved total. Um, it's still sort of kind of chugging along, hopefully. Maybe hasn't really posted anything for quite a while, but um, I'm hoping to reopen that soon. Um, and then since May 2011, I've been vlogging um, blogging actually on Tumblr, and that's actually where I think most of my growth with the asexual community has come from is Tumblr. And I've just been blogging continuously um, about my experiences, um, you know, topics that are relevant to the ace community, and sort of just hoping to open up discourse and increase the discourse on asexuality through Tumblr. Um, as a, I feel Tumblr is a bit more of a, um, a, din a dynamic. Um, venue for asexuality because it doesn't have the admon team to sort of um, say, well, you can't say that. And we have assholes who come along and, you know, treat us like shit, and then we can fight back against them and by that sort of conflict um, just increase discourse on asexuality. And that's, so I think Tumblr is rather worthwhile for that. Um, that's me. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Johanna Villamil. I'm from Colombia. I'm the representative for, oh, for the Hispanic America essential community. This year I found, I found the, um, the visibility and uh, education project uh, in Spanish. Uh, Hispanic America is around 20 countries. Go Mexico to Argentina and also Spain. And I have some pictures, but I think that in the questions I'm going to show and talk more about it. Uh, and that's it for now. Carmela for pronounceability slate. Um, I've been with the German Avon uh, since January 2011. Um, it, actually, I found about, uh, out about Avon um, two years prior, and I was like, mm -hmm. maybe it's me, maybe it's not. Um, and um, so when I eventually joined, I was really thinking, Visibility already, and um, I helped um, the formulating the uh, um, creating of a new uh, leaflet because the one we had with was really really um, bad. <laughs> and um, yeah, since then we've been on um, a small pride with um, some kind of info table, and I. Marched with the uh, alternate Berlin Pride uh, two weeks ago. We were like three people. Uh, <laughs> and you know, three flits again. And um, we're going to be with the Stuttgart Pride uh, Summer Festival in two weeks' time. So, uh, yeah. And I actually have the only active German blog on its sexuality. It's, um, Okay, impronounceable, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, you can try. Yeah, it's uh, der Tor Heidkerneboch. Okay. It's like the <laughs> Foolishness Hostel, um, the 
drawing from Nietzsche, who had a section about um, celibacy and abstinence, where he um, yeah, called it kind of, kind of foolishness, but um, yeah. <laughs> From Italy, and I remember the most the like the most important thing I remember about asexuality e and Italy is when I joined Even English, which was the same day I joined Even Italy. But I haven't been active in Even Italy for months actually because I could see the difference. Like no one knew about asexuality in Italy. Like the community, even online, was really really small, and still is really really small. Like there was probably less than fifty people active in the community while we have like hundreds of in English active every day and we have 37,000 like registered on even English. So the, like the biggest difference was really about how much asexuality is well known. Because even talking to people, you know, when you come out and that's really awkward for everyone I guess. And they're just like, oh, they're not like in, in English in when you explain to someone who speaks English and has heard the word asexuality. They're like, oh, so the first thing is, so you don't have sex. But they, at least they get close to it. In, in Italian, it's kind of different, and they get close to, they look at you like, maybe you don't have genitalia or something. Yeah. <laughs> because there's a like, language problem, too, as well. Because like in, in Italian, we have very similar words for both things. Like asexual, in Italian, is asessuale, which uh, is very close to asessuato, which means you have no genitalia. <laughs> They're kind of confused at the moment, and we need to work on visibility. And I have to thank Cleander as well, Mary, who talked uh, earlier, because she's actually helping me translating and creating stuff for visibility. And uh, we had meetups, and still a few meetups, but we're working on improving awareness in Italy because it's really important. And I think I talked too much. <laughs> I'm from Israel. Well, um, my first encounter with asexuality was in Hebrew. I first found the Israeli community or searching online people that don't have sex or something like that. And I, well, it was in Hebrew again. Yeah, and I encountered the Israeli you know, group. And then after a while, I kind of moved to Avon in English because it's more, because it is more active. Also, the Israeli community is pretty active. We have meetings and everything. And for the past three months, I'm, and there is a big organization in Israel for youth LGBTs. So after two years of fighting them, we managed to have an internet forum in their site for youth as asexuals in Hebrew. So since the moment it was open, I'm the mode there. So I'm moderating the discussion of youth asexuality in Hebrew. So uh, anything? Um, I'm free army if you want to know that. So I didn't uh, done my army service. And I will pass the microphone on. Thank you everyone. My name is Illy and um, I come from the Bay Area, California, the US. Um, Woohoo, there's a couple others from, <laughs> from my locale in the room. Hello. Um, I learned I was asexual in 2005 and um, I started to come out around the, like a year later. Uh, some of the main things I've done with the community are I'm the writer of the blog A Sexy Beast which has been going on, <laughs> thank you, it has been going on since 2007 which in internet years is about 300 years <laughs> and um, it has like over 600 posts so if you're ever bored, you can go read the archives. And um, I'm really interested, originally it started out being about pop culture and asexuality. Um, there's not a lot of pop culture representations, although there's more than there were when I started. Um, but it sort of ended up being about like gender and all kinds of sexuality and being queer and relationships and all sorts of things. But um, the other thing I've been involved a lot with is meetups in the Bay Area. and. Along with another person, I started have I started regular meetups in um, the regularly occurring meetups in the Bay Area, which were heavily influenced by the London meetups. So um, while well, the London meetups I think have changed, ours are now sort of what London meetups used to be like, maybe. So it's kind of an interesting like interchange there. But um, 
Let's see, what else have I done? Um, so I was the first person to organize asexuals marching in San Francisco Pride in 2009. And so we've done that uh, every year since. I have not always been the one organizing it, but um, I was the one person, I was the person that started it out. And um, let's see, what else? American culture and asexuality. I feel like um, in the English speaking world, there's definitely a sort of continuity in terms of how much asexuality is recognized because there are so many more resources in English. I think the in terms of living in the Bay Area, it's a very historically gay friendly area. So I feel that being there, it might be a little bit different than other places, but I find that there's occasional people who do know what asexuality is. However, there's of course, as usual, many more who have never heard of it before. So I look forward to answering any questions that you may have about the asexual in the US. It was some like translations of the English website, and that really was like a kind of a huge problem. Uh, for example, uh, it's just an example. It's about talk about um, the uh, sex positive movement uh, into the uh, asexuality community. When I try to to find about a sex positive movement in Spanish. They say, do you mean movimiento sex, sexy position? You know, like, <laughs> no, it's really not what you want to mean. Really. And the thing that I realized is that just basically the sex positive movement, movement doesn't exist in Spanish. It's something that we, uh, it's a cultural process that just don't exist in Latin America or in Spain. So we are trying to talk about asexuality and try that the people find themselves with tools that they just don't understand. The other thing about uh, Latin America, it's about um, the sexuality of uh, Latin people. And I'm talking about like the, for example, the Latin lover thing. And uh, I don't know if you know what is a Latin lover. So I have like some definitions here that really explain that. Uh, I love this. That is a politically correct term for a fucking Mexican. A hot ass guy. Uh, 
they were sensual and manly. The uh, Georgios uh, wore golden skin, dark bedroom eyes, and the full lips. Uh, most are hot, but those Cuban men are so sexy with a rich ethnic accent. It's something about the Spanish accent that really the people are like crazy in it. And I don't know if, like, if you know like, these terms like macho or mamacita. I don't know if you know what does that mean. Uh, and it's something about the Latin American people that you are like for being Latin. This is other example. Um, and is this is like just a kind of an invitation. This is a new tool that we put in our website uh, the last month, and is the map. If you go to uh, sexuality uh, organization uh, SP, you go to the map. And okay, there was an idea of uh, Julio, who is the represent, he is represented the Brazilian community, and he did uh, a map. So they are using the map, uh, and it's great because you can find like people next to you, and you can also um, so the blue ones are just people that be in the community. The red ones, people that are represented the community or local represented of asexuality, and the yellow ones are meetings. So you can hang out and are being like really a great tool. So if you want to be in the map, you just go to there and you can send us your information and we like to pull you there. And this is a, a picture. Uh, I went uh, last weekend to the Pride in Bogota, and it was the first time that I think that uh, someone of the Asian community in Latin America uh, are in a Pride. Uh, this is me. <laughs> <laughs> and I had like, and she also say a sexy Latin novel. <laughs> It was a group of friends, they are a group of feminists, and they have this group that it's called the Ancre Foxy Ladies. So, <laughs> uh, I have this uh, placard that says, Asexual, uh, uh, Asexual Sexy Lady. No, a sexy Foxy Lady. And um, yes, it was an awesome experience, and it was really hyped. Okay, and that's it. So, um, this is the question and answer portion in which you like to ask to ask anything you want to ask. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, yep. Okay, um, so um, I, I think Joanna and to some extent Leia um, have already touched on this. So this, this is mostly to the um, non-native English speakers, but I'm sure um, Greg and Gilly probably have interesting comments as well. And that's, I mean, you both um, speak um, English as a second or maybe third language. Um, so I was wondering what are, um, <coughs> I was wondering if um, you think differences in the language, like, English and to your own language um, have actually contributed to the way that um, asexuality um, operates, or a the asexual disability movement operates in um, your part of the world. Ah. Um, as I said, I met asexuality first in Hebrew and then I switched to Greek, although I speak both languages since I was a young child. Um, in Israel, we saw many people come and find their sexuality first in English and then join the movement in Israel in Hebrew. And sometimes we found that while the translated, translating everything they know into Hebrew, 
we have many mistakes or misunderstandings. There is a lot of information around about asexuality, especially in English. And when your English is not that perfect, you get misunderstandings that might be severe and might uh, damage more than help. So I think something that they asked me to tell in the community in Israel is we try, whenever we're trying to explain or to welcome newbies, even in English, to try to do as, as simple as possible for kissing for engineers here. You know the term. So I think that is something that must may influence us a lot. So other than English? Yeah, I'm not English, but I do speak a Germanic language like English, and so um, the translations are pretty easy, and most just you have to Germanize it. And we're done. <laughs> <laughs> um, two things, and um, with the English thing, it's uh, sometimes like uh, with the media requests, some of these things like they want an article for a newspaper in Latin America or something. And they go, uh, for example, to a bank, and so the article, like in Latin, Latin America, says like, "Oh, look, this movement from America that it's going all over there." And it's like, "What? Like, no, it doesn't happen here as well." And the other thing is that uh, when I'm t talking about like the cultural process, is that uh, I think that um, it's really different how. Can you understand what asexuality is? Depend on the place that you are, because everybody have like different stories and cultural stories, and it's really hard to try to understand what asexuality is through a process that is not your own, own process. And uh, I think that is something that we are like starting to work in in Latin America, and is like being conscious of how asexuality is being in, yes, like in each country. Um, well, about equally and Italian language and translation, there's a lot of issues, obviously, because even though in English has some quite few characteristics, like uh, adding uh, prefixes or suffixes like a, demi, semi, to pretty much any word, because English is pretty flexible as a language, so to, like, to make you understand like you can add uh, something to some word, and even if it's, it doesn't exist, the other person understands what you mean, you know? We, do, we can do that in Italian. We have pretty strict grammar, as everyone who spoke Italian a little knows, or who just approached Italian. So the funny thing is, for example, just to uh, like approach the umbrella issue as well, is about the intellectuals. <coughs> because, uh, for example, um, we don't use the word demi. Like, demi doesn't exist in Italian, so... There were like I'm working on the Italian forum as well on Even Italy, and there were a lot of issues about the translation of the misaxual because there was translating it as semisaxual, which is something different. Uh, in, in I'm not really sure, but it should be more related to libido than to um, sexual attraction. And so there were issues because if you translate the misaxual as semisaxual, how do you translate semisaxual then? Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of you know convulsing and everything. And yeah, just to make one example. Uh, other examples are the, even just the word asexuality doesn't exist. I mean, it's not like it, it exists in Italian, so we're like making it known now. And it's something like, what is it? Like, it's not like, yeah, I can't have an idea. I'm like, what is it? Like, what does it mean? Yesterday I was at marching in work, right? And a few Italian people stopped us and I talked to them and they were like, I never heard of it in Italy. So can you explain to me? Because my English is not that uh, well. Uh, it's like a little broken, but we are not broken, but we are trying to translate. Yeah, exactly. Because it's just for the placard. Yes, for the placard. We are trying to translate. Uh, we are not broken. And it was not a <laughs> way no, 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 to no, no, say no. that. It was like, no, we, you remember? <laughs> I, 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 I was on the Arts person trying to coordinate all the language ones, even though I only speak English. And, um, and the other thing is that we're not broken, uh, not broken and not alone. Originally it was going to be Spanish and now it's Italian, it was, it was both romantic languages. And the trouble we had doing that it was just... It's it's not no way. You cannot say that. You can 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 say
I'm not saying that. You didn't try to do it in Hebrew. You don't want to try. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, a lot of the times, a lot of the, uh, the translations are not literal. I mean, the German one is asexual and das is good, so we just like asexual and that's good. And I think the um, there's a couple others like that. The Italian so. one says we're normal and you're not alone. Because we can say you're not broken. broken. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. things yeah. that you cannot say. Yeah, like yeah. impossible to from Yeah, the Polish ones were not deficient or something. Defective. We're not defective. Even though the word broken, actually, when I, when I, when I read it in English, the word broken is exactly what you feel. You know, I think many people in here can understand like what you feel when you read Ava and you're like, wow, like finally, like this is me. And you have felt broken for a long, for a long time, and not having a word in your, your yes. own language that lets you express what you're feeling is really hard and complicated, and can make you really feel confused about it. Mm -hmm. So when you read in English, you know, if you if you like to speak English, like you're like thank you, David, because you <laughs> <laughs> so it just okay. questions. If you're um, our person who should have a have a chair of the would like a question. Hi, I'm, I'm interested because obviously in um, lots of other countries there isn't the same level of acceptance, general acceptance of LGBT, gay, bi, all that sort of thing. I'm wondering if, especially in religious countries, whether asexuality is seen as more, as more, uh, or more acceptable or less acceptable. I, I think culturally that seems like it's going to vary by country. I'm really interested to see what your perspectives are on that. I can. You're the first. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I can take this because uh, America is one of the most religious countries in the industrialized world. I mean, obviously that's a problematic term, so I'll go like that. Um, but uh, I personally am not from a religious family, but uh, from American asexuals that are, I have heard that. Um, although some people think asexuality makes you pure or holy, as we've talked about, it's normally seen as a very negative thing because uh, marriage and children are so highly, um, uh, not prized, but the expectation in religious communities is that you will, be, you will get married and have children. That's something that many asexuals do not want or cannot have, so um, I think that because I didn't come from any sort of religious tradition, um, my future in the relationship sense was seen as much more open, and I think that made it easier for me to, uh, to like tell my family I was asexual. Well, as most of you know, as many of you might know, Israel is the Jewish country. I'm Jewish. I'm really Jewish. Um, I was brought up more religious than I'm now. I became secular when I grew up. And I must say, well, acceptance for LGBTQA in Israel, um, it depends where you live and which sort of community you are. The general rule, which have many acceptances, uh, where you're going to a more conservative or orthodox or more religious communities, you're getting less and less accepted. And more than that, I think especially with the A, with the asexual, asexuality is easier to digest than, let's say, being gay or trans or something like that causes it's less of a surprise. But on the other hand, as might of you that know the Jewish world, the pressure to settle down and have a family is very high in the Jewish world. So my parents are iffy about me bringing them grandchildren and things like that. So, but it's generally more accepted in Israel, yes. Oh, thank you. Let's go to Italy. <laughs> uh, I live in Rome, just to say something where the Vatican City is, like I live pretty close to it. Uh, I, my, my parents are not really religious, but my, part of my family is, so I was brought up like half and half. So like really free to like make my mind about it, which is really awesome, my parents are the best. And so thinking about asexuality and religion, and religion has to be taken into the context of Italy and Catholicism because it's not just Christian, it's really Catholic, and we, you don't really never hear about other Christian churches that much either, even though there are, you don't really hear about it because it's just Catholic, and Catholicism is taught in school. So just to make a bigger like environmental panorama, like you have to think that 
gay couples can adopt, the single parents cannot adopt, uh, there's no civil marriage, there's nothing, there's no rights for any other the heterosexual couples. So we're pretty behind about that. And so asexuality will be pretty interesting because I'm really curious to see what's going to come out of it. Because I don't really have an idea of how much it's going to be accepted. I mean, thinking about Catholicism, there's probably going to be two outcomes. There's going to be the one, oh, he would be really great as a nun. <laughs> <laughs> so all priests are asexual, and they were like, then they would say just like, oh no, no, all priests are asexual <laughs> because of news, you know. <laughs> so yeah, that could be an interesting outcome, as just as that could be the, oh, but you know, you have to get married and have children, and there's the thing that marriage can be cancelled if you don't consume because it's part of marriage, like the rights of a husband. And the thing is, I don't want to get married, so I think my parents kind of understood that, but it's okay. And yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting. I mean, it's actually, as I know, it's so unknown in Italy, so I don't really have an answer about it. In press, um, I think we're going to talk about press later, so that's going to be pretty fun. Um, have fun about the religious. Thank you. Okay, uh, Germany is a pretty secular country. Um, so what we actually get is more like, yeah, what you don't want any is like, that can't be true, you've got to be joking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, boy, yeah. Um, okay, acceptance is pretty good. Uh, there's still low level resentment. Um, cannot adopt and um, there's actually no, it's a civil partnership is possible but no marriage. Um, and um, what we get pretty regularly is that we assume to be a religious group um, as a sexuals. So like, um, the funniest thing actually was in the Berlin Pride when some gay guy told us to, yeah, there's the next mosque, uh, take your flyers there, it's sort of like, ooh, <laughs> what, what is that? But, uh, when the digital thing go, uh, then too many Muslims in Germany or what? I don't know. Okay. Um, well, like, uh, South America is very, like, religious and it's Catholic as well, like, Kaka, and, uh, so it's, kind of like the same experience and but they are like very excited about you what you say like you don't have sex they are like yeah because like it's like a celibacy thing but then you say like eh, okay but don't family don't kids like ah <laughs> <laughs> but um I think well um yeah like the thing of the family is really really serious thing and it's very seriously because uh, for example, if you you really like you um, for can be really a woman, you have to get pregnant and have a family. And for the men, it's the same thing. And <laughs> no, no pregnant. happen. Um, Yes, so, yes, it is that. Okay, so there's some bogus statistic that says Canada is 85% Christian. Um, it doesn't really take into account how secular Canada is, and I suppose it would surprise me to know how ubiquitous it is uh, for acceptance of LGBT, and as I've experienced for asexuality. So, um, Maybe it could just be the area that I live in, um, which is Alberta, which is actually the um, most conservative province <coughs> there is. But, <laughs> um, I mean, so far, acceptance for everything has been ubiquitous, and religion is kind of, in all um, social interactions, it's kind of on the back burner. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing, if that just kind of hides a lot of um, issues there are, or um, they actually do get worked out and it's just not a problem. But um, as I've experienced, like for where I work, six out of ten managers are LGBT. Um, everyone is 
you know, it's that human. So, yes, they don't really have anything interesting to say because, you know, it's, it's just good. It's good. Um, it's really just sort of otherwise. religion is like, um, I don't know if you know the Saint uh, San Sebastian, that is the Saint that he is very popular in Brazil, and if you know the image, he's a very sensual guy, he's very sensual and he's bloody, and uh, in Brazil this thing of the be very sensual is really, really important, and I don't know, like, don't have sex is almost like a sin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Brazilian people really have like a big, big problem with this thing. Uh, yes, and I think that is something in the religion as well. Any more questions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this is the question for people from non-English speaking countries. Um, how are you right now, I know that you talk, uh, touched on this briefly, Camilla, uh, I'm sorry, um, maybe, uh, yeah, then Camilla, um, earlier. How are you getting assistance from people in native English, where there's a lot more organization right now? Um, how are you currently getting assistance, if at all? And what are opportunities for you to get assistance that aren't happening yet? As I said before, um, many people come to the Israeli Hebrew forms after the enabling. So, and English is, although it's not an official language, people know basic level of English in Israel. The most thing that is important to me to ask from the English community is to keep it simple, you know. <laughs> this is what KISS means, <laughs> all the engineers. Um, it's really that, you know, there is too much information around and too much information and broken English makes mistakes, problems, damages, things like that. So I think it's a general rule that would be good to English speakers as well. Whenever we find or meet a new guy or someone that is interested, to keep it in the lowest level, simplest level of both the language and both what you pass on as information when you pass it on to a different guy or girl. Whatever. So, this is my thing as an Israeli Hebrew speaker. Well, as the Italian online community is so hosted on the Avon English server, and I have to say that since that since I've joined Avon English, I've started working on like relationships with uh, between England and Italy about uh, Avon online. And again, I have to thank Mary because she was there since my basically the first day, when I wanted to start translating pamphlets and leaflets for universities and visibility, because we have none really good in Thai. I mean, there were a lot of misunderstandings with language and a lot of mistakes about celibacy and the like. So Mary helped me a lot, and we, we now have a few leaflets and a few posters. And also, um, well, the, I have to say that now the, the relationship seems to be improving between Evan Italian and English, and we've been had a lot, especially recently, as David knows, because we have been, we have been through a lot of issues, uh, especially on tech side. And so, yeah, I have to say that now that I'm in both teams, because I'm so, both in the moderation team in English and the moderation team in Italian, uh, there are more relationships, and this is, I think, a good thing, because now I have the opportunity to have the Italian community Grow better and faster, hopefully. So it's mostly thanks to English. Mm, yeah, in the German community, community, there's about um, 8,000 registered members in the German forum, and there's about 1,000 active each year. And we get about, get about um, two or three new members each week. <laughs> um, yeah, what I can say is to keep up the work, keep up the visibility work and appearances in films and on TV and on the radio because um, eventually someone in Germany spots that there's someone, something going on in the UK or in the US and starts to Google and finds the German forum and he gets requests for interviews and stuff. So, um, and yeah, translating of the material is usually 
not so um, not so difficult because most Germans do speak some English. Um, I think that what is going on right now in the uh, Spanish community is that uh, other feels like it was a community, like looking outside, like, okay, what is uh, they're talking about? Do we have to translate this or not or whatever? But now we are like looking, it's like inside. And it's like thinking uh, our like our own sexuality and all these things. So we are like building like again, like all the definitions and these things because it was really confusing. And uh, yes, like many things that uh, are there are not really useful for the people. Um, and about like the but uh, when I, I don't know I've been working with Michael with uh, many other requests and these things. Um, well, I also like I used to live in California, so it was like almost two years, and I think that it was a really like great experience like working. Uh, and meet people over there. And other thing that was, was really curious, it was about la, about the uh, the episode of the doctor house. Uh, yes, I don't know that happened. And the people of Argentina and Chile and this thing really was angry and upset. And all my mail was like, what well, is going on there? We have to do something. And everybody was very angry. Yes, I remember that I sent you an email like, what is going on? <laughs> um, with that. Any other questions? Hey, someone from the back that I've across the stage for. Awesome. Uh, you said about organizing uh, regional events with like neighboring countries and coordinating this. So maybe it's more for Europe and Latin America, because Israel may be more difficult. Uh, <laughs> I wish we could do that. I wish we could do a regional meeting. I try. Yes. <laughs> hey, who wants this first? Okay, um, this is actually pretty difficult. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, okay, pretend he's from the Netherlands. But uh, the funny thing is, we would actually have to speak English all for all of us, for all of us because, um, uh, yeah, there's so many languages. <laughs> um, there's been, yeah, some international meets, it's like uh, with uh, German speaking Switzerland and uh, the South Germans, or uh, Austrians and Germans. But, um, <coughs> There's not really much communication going on between, us, say, the Polish Forum and the German Forum, or the French Forum and the German Forum. I think I know one person who's actually both member in the um, French and the German Forum, because he doesn't speak English, but it's French. <laughs> well, uh, there is like going to other countries to meet, like to be to do meet beer meetups, something like that. Well, the thing about Italians is, I think it's pretty famous that they're really lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I can't make, like, uh, we don't make, like, really, really many meetups because they're really, like, well, we, we work a lot. Like, we work many, many hours a day, actually, I, I comparing like, to the other friends I have uh, outside of Italy. And really organizing meetups in a, in a city is already complicated inside the country. Like, we, we, we've done one meetup since I joined, which was, like, in December. And so in seven months we've done one meetup in Rome and there were like seven people. So and I, I posted about World Pride and the conference like months ago because London is very, very easy for us to reach because it's not expensive at all. There are Italian people here. And it's not really expensive at all, but it's really, really lazy. So like, unless it's like outside of our house, it's really hard <laughs> to think about oh yeah, I'm gonna go there. <laughs> Um, again, as I said, it's a, a bit unfortunate that uh, our neighbors don't like us. <laughs> That's a bit of a problem. But um, Israeli community would really like more coordination with many European communities. Or I know that Guy has been to San Francisco with uh, Dave. Uh, Guy is the major spokesperson for the Israeli community. Um, we, are, we have 
quite an active community in Israel. We have meetups in Israel in Tel Aviv, something like once in two months. We have we are marching in the Pride Parade in Tel Aviv. You, if you see the purple shirts in Tel Aviv, it's us. No one else is allowed to wear purple. <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy way. So if you're ever in Tel Aviv, give us a call. We might do a meeting just especially for you. <laughs> we do that sometimes, really. So, but we wish we would have more communication with our neighbors and then with you all, and maybe even further away. I mean, I think the closest thing that we have come to a regional meetup is at San Francisco Pride because people come from Southern California, the Northwest, people come from the Midwest, the East Coast, even um, other countries here and there. Um, but in terms of other regional things for us, uh, it's funny because everybody I talk to seems to think that people in their country uh, are not very motivated to attend meetups for the most part. Uh, it is I think it's difficult to get people out um, no matter what country it is. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it would be good to do more regional things in California as well. I mean, we are a very large state, but that should mean there's more sexual sex. So. Someone else wants to answer this question. I just want to ask us. Yeah, we've got two countries. Yeah, you don't have to. If you don't want, you don't have to. One thing about Latin America is that we are really like spread out over all the countries. And it's really hard to just like in one country travel city to other city. It's really hard. Uh, but we are doing something that it's really fun, and is that when someone are going to travel, I don't know, for example, me that in, came to Bogota to London, so I could stop Venezuela for a few hours and Madrid for a few hours. So in Venezuela I get out and I have a meeting, and in Madrid I get out again. <laughs> <laughs> and that's happened, like, yes, like, with a few people there, like, some people go and hang out in Bogota for five hours, and uh, I just it came from Mexico. Uh, yes, I need someone. Uh, yeah, that that works. <laughs> well, unfortunately, um, Canada being so large and airfare being so expensive, like you guys and girls have no idea. Um, uh, it's really hard unless it's within driving distance um, to get people out, um, even across provinces. It's hard to get people out. So. Um, Regional meetups like that, cross border, it's pretty hard, di difficult without asking quite a lot of people. Um, so that's it. Out of curiosity, is there anyone else here from a different country who wants to say something? Oh. Uh. <laughs> 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 say something. We'll make Yes, hi, I'm from uh, Holland. I'll stand up. Hello everyone. I'm from Holland. I'm just here around. But the um, yeah, thing I can say about our country um, it's problematic enough to find people from Holland to meet up. Usually we uh, start out by a forum and then it's a thread with like you know, maybe hundreds of posts. And then we finally have a plan and then it's like dozens of people that say I will come and people that actually come is maybe seven, six, six. So we try with Germany, yeah. It's just going to be worse, I think. I don't know, there's this thing that people don't dare to come for the first time or something. It's, it's really a problem for us, at least. Because there's always the same people coming and others saying, I want to, but they don't. And it's, it's not growing or anything, not, not much happening in there. No. Also, technically, as England and Wales are a different country, I, I happen to know that the, um, uh, the Bristol meetups and the Cardiff meetups tend to sort of alternate between the two. Does that count? <laughs> uh, any other questions? Okay, uh, I saw your hand up earlier before, so I'll go with you first. Hi, I was going to ask another question earlier, and then you brought up the thing of meetups. Um, and just to quickly say, a couple of years ago, I organised the Euro Meet in Paris when I was living in France. And um, it kind of, it, it started off just being a thing where I was talking to some British aid mics and saying, oh, let's just have like, a good trip in Paris because I'll be living there and I can organise something. But I was living in the south of France at the time, but 
but I decided to post on other forums just to see if there was any interest. And um, to my surprise, there was a lot of interest. Um, the majority of people who came, there were 40 people together over the weekend that came. Um, I, I think about 30 of them were French, especially towards the last minute, more and more French people were saying, I'm coming, I'm coming. Um, and maybe only about 10 people were not from France. But there were people from different countries who came all that way. Um, I think there is that interest there, and I think that maybe we could try more to have these. I think in Europe we are quite lucky because we, we do live quite close to one another. Obviously it's hard for you guys. Um, but I think we should make the most of that and maybe try to have these kind of European meets a bit more often. The one problem of that meet was there was a language barrier. Um, although most, like a lot of the French people could speak English, there was that kind of French-English divide. So we would have to think about that and how we can um, include everybody. Uh, perhaps say we're going to, sorry, but we might have to have like a, one language we're going to stay in. Uh, it is difficult. Language barriers make it difficult, but um, yeah, I just wanted to say that I think there was a possibility to have more of these um, cross-country kind of meets. Um, yeah. um, I'm not sure how long I can tell you from. I'm waiting for Michael to tell me to stop it and quit. Um, there was a woman down on the side who had her hand up earlier, I think. Pass that down. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering about the reactions of the LGBT people in other countries to uh, approach people with LGBT people. I can do it with five microphones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm Michael Bradley. I'm from Germany. Um, so I'm from Germany. Um, although there is an LGBT community in Israel, it's mostly G gay men, <laughs> um, which is good, but causes some problems because. Again, many times when you think about the LGBT community, you think about gay men. And we have some connections, but there is a big debate inside the AIDS community in Israel. Should we take a part in the LGBT community? Should we, like I do, being host on the website? Should we work with the Tel Aviv Pride Parade? Should we do those things? Because we feel both connected and disconnected from them. Same thing with uh, accreditation between us. Some LGBTs uh, accept asexuality as a different orientation, and some just saying, well, that's nice, but you are not a part of LGBTs. So there's a big debate about it going on in Hebrew and Israel. So if you could read Hebrew, I invite you to <laughs> join and read with us. I mean, there's actually a similar situation in America in which the LGBT community, I feel like it just called itself LGBT as a, um, I don't know, political thing. It's not um, It's not like lesbian, gay, bisexual, and trans people are all working together on the same um, projects or political projects because they're not. Um, and I think in terms of acceptance, it's very individual. There are a couple of organizations that are accepting of asexuality, and those tend to be the um, college or university uh, student groups. And there are maybe a couple more that I'm not as aware of, but um, it tends to be, like I said, very individual. Um, I've learned that if someone is queer, that's no real guarantee that they're going to be more accepting of asexuality. So it really has to be taken kind of on a person-to-person on -person basis in terms of whether they're going to be um, informed, accepting, open to the information or any of that. Well, about Italy, I have to say that I still have little experience with, little to no experience with LGBT because Actually, the only thing I did was conducting one group I had in my neighborhood, and there's a little club that just opened, which is a kind of miracle in Italy, to have a space where LGBT can like, group together in the public. And yeah, I contacted the, some of the guys there, and I asked them if they were okay like, with uh, having a discussion about asexuality, and they said that we can arrange something, so, so far they're pretty open. I don't know how we're going like, to discuss it, but we'll see. Let you know. Mm, yeah, in Germany it seems to depend too. Um, our reactions we had at Berlin and the smaller flight, um, they were pretty good. Um, and uh, too, when we uh, said an interest in the Stuttgart flight, they were like, okay, yeah, sure. Um, but I think someone, uh, actually some uh, a 
lesbian person brought this up with the uh, German association for lesbians and gays and they were like me yeah. um, actually i wasn't there, there so, so i can't really tell so yeah i um, think we are going to be having interesting reactions once we get a bit more visible Um, well, um, personally, like, I, I'm not trying to get like a sexuality into the LGTB community, but uh, we have like a, I have a great relationship with them, and I've been like uh, giving talks and all these kind of things there. Uh, I'm more involved about uh, in groups of um, sexual diversity. Uh, and it's been like a great experience because like they want to be very very inclusive group and have like someone is sexual is like they feel very wealthy group like oh we have also <laughs> someone is sexual and that is great. Um, any involvement I think with the LGBT communities. Um, with asexuality uh, has been on a small scale, something that's done individually with someone's university clubs or other sort of organizations like that, and that it's really hard to see what kind of penetration we're getting like that, um, and it's really hard to see if there's been any pushback on it. Uh, certainly there hasn't been anything large scale, um, and if there was, I think it would be coming out of um, Western Canada, BC. Um, I think that's where we have the largest conglomeration of ACEs, and that would be where the push would have to come from. Um, but thus far, I mean, we don't really have that level of activity yet, so that's unfortunate. I've just got my own question, so I'm going to shut myself in here. Um, so uh, we know uh, that Trauma Project in the USA recently had a, an act of a, a do some training material on asexuals. So I'm wondering what the campaign for that, that was like in America and if there's anything similar or similar resources in the other countries. Nope. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, you did the, the Trevor Project, kind of like this helpline for LGBT and questioning you to kind of call if they're if they need support, like emotional support. No. <laughs> um, I'm not aware of one. Could be, could be not. I don't know. I actually do know that we have in Italy helplines and support because I've been working on helplines and support resources uh, for several countries for uh, Aiden. And yeah, actually, the, the, the little project in my neighborhood also is a helpline. Like, there's a little office and we answer phone and everything, and they're kind of supportive. Um, as I told in my beginning, I'm a moderator in an Israeli youth ACE form. So, yes, we do have kind of that kind of support. And the other forms or uh, groups that they have for uh, youth is mostly not as LGBT and asking, we call it, the team group. Um, when they have someone that is thinking or they think might be um, interested to contact them, the asexual community, they usually all PMing me or sending me an SMS. So last night, 4 a.m. British time, I got an SMS, read your private messages in the Israeli home, there is two guys that are anxious to speak with you. So I had to wake up and write them a response in Hebrew. So it was kind of fun, but kind of... I'm tired now. <laughs> so I'm with the Trevor Project in the US. I'm not going to claim that I, I know anything about the process of that because I wasn't um, involved at all. I'm pretty sure it was Sarah Beth Brooks that uh, spearheaded that project with our right DJ. So yeah, if you want to know more, uh, you should definitely get in touch with her. I'm sure she'd be glad to tell you and maybe give you advice on doing something similar um, in other places. Uh, she's, I think, Kitchen Witch on the forums, if that's familiar to anyone. So yeah, um, I don't want to be like, get in touch with her, and then everyone's like, and then she's like, where did I get all these emails? But uh, that probably won't happen, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. So who wants to be the final question? Make it a good one. OK. <laughs> I'd just like to float the idea of CAL, 
which is conference approved literature. Um, what global movements now tend to do, that I've come across and I'm involved in, is to get something like this approved by a conference such as this one. And once that's approved, in any country, in any language, it can be directly translated as the text for the particular movement. And then it's actually much easier. So I just put that as an idea for the future. Thanks.